Now we're going to open it up to questions from some of our students. Hi, I'm Kate Sarge, um, second year post-production student here. Um, you know, I think that it's very important that in schools with Take Your Daughter to Work Day that we're teaching women that you can be very powerful and outspoken. And I was wondering how like, you think that in media and just in general how we can show that, to, especially the younger generation. It's really going to be a question of what kind of content do you want to make and put out there? Mm -hmm. Because I believe there's an audience for the content that you're talking about, but somebody's going to have to decide that they're going to make it. So, yeah. so I, I, I think I see you like owning a company that produces content, right? <laughs> Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That that's those those are the kinds of things I think one needs to be thinking about. Go get some experience watching some other people do it, and then go go create your own content and sell it. My name is Ariel Ross. I'm a second year post production student. One of the things that um, you touch on is you know we are a minority, and um, what how are what are some tools that you've used to break that wall? My answer to this was to start my own company. Uh, where there would be no question about who was in charge. So, so that is something you all need to think about. I think understanding where you feel comfortable working in what kind of environment. Some people do really well in big organizations. Some people don't. Some people need their own organization. Some people want to partner with somebody and do something. There are lots of different ways to do the work that you want to do. And it's getting finding out in the same way that you know when you've done a good job, find out what kind of setting and what kind of numbers of people, where do you feel comfortable working? Where do you think you thrive the most? And I do think for a lot of women at the moment, I mean, we're starting businesses at two to three at a time, so the rate of men. I think a lot of it is as we're finding where we, where we work well, and I think some of those women are now able to go back into big old organizations and start to change them and, and do different things, but that has been my experience. Well, hi, I'm Amy. We had the pleasure of meeting right before this segment. I'm uh, staff here, actually Paula Fraley's assistant, by the way. Um, my question to you and comment before the question is that oftentimes in segments such as this, we hear about, um, or the question is asked, what can we learn from the male leadership role? What right. advice can we get from them? How do we look at them as role models? And my question is, as women that we empower each other, what advice can we give to the men for a change? Do we have anything to offer besides looking at, oh, what can they give us or what can we learn from them? Mm -hmm. So what's your advice to the few women in this room? What can we actually, as leaderships in ourselves, what can we actually offer the men? I, I, I would say there is a, um, often an openness that women have in situations that I think is important for, for men to appreciate and probably engage in, in more of. Uh, I, I, I think we have more fun, honestly, at work, uh, women do, and I think that's an important element of, of, of working together. And, and I will also say the totality of the person comes through faster. It is harder for us to hide the totality of who we are because we have children, because we're responsible for, and men have these things as well. And they have been socialized to like put them over here when they come to work. And I think we are all richer and do better jobs when we are thinking of the whole of humanity rather than just that, that, that thing that we've got to get done that day. Hi, my name is Brian Gee, and I am a first year game design student. And there is a recent trend in strong female roles within video games. The one thing I want to ask is what do you find the common denominator in female leadership? What are almost cliches that you notice within female leaders? Female leadership, good. You know, I do find a lot of them have a physical confidence that is important. Uh, there is something about physical confidence that comes through in leadership positions that is, I think, important. And I think there is, I see more of that in, in particularly younger women leaders that, that are coming up where there is a, uh, a physicality to their leadership that is not about beauty, but is about strength. I, I also think it'd be interesting for Howard to answer that question. So you, the last five or six businesses you said you had strong women leaders as a part of the team? Yeah, I, <clears throat> I think that um, 
what you guys were talking about before about the visionary and then the manager and actually there's a third you know part to that equation which is the person who comes along after those two people and puts yeah. in into place processes that make sense and drive these other two people crazy by the way uh, but I think that but when you construct a successful team you discover that it is diverse and that people you know are packages and talent comes in a sort of a awkward you know deal and we have to accept the sort of the shortcomings that come with creativity I mean it's it's not all smooth edged uh, and I think that that's you know that's an important thing can can I interject a question Brad is that okay um, this is something that a number of women I know who are in leadership positions uh, have had successful careers or in the midst of a successful career that they say they never thought of themselves as, well, I'm a female, whatever it is. That they just did the job they wanted to do, they went after the things they were interested in, and it just so <coughs> happened that they ended up being the only woman in the room. Do you feel like it through your career, were you, how conscious or how much was it a, a you know, part of your mindset that you were a woman doing <coughs> whatever it was you were doing? I always think this is an interesting question. How would you not? Or that it didn't. I, mean, I know. How would I know. you not? But how would you not just be being self-aware? You're bringing yourself into a situation. I mean, I think men are aware that they're men. I don't. I don't think they ever don't think about. I don't think it dominates. I don't think it dominates my thinking. But you are. You are who you are. And and so I always am curious about the women who say that. Well, I would be I one of those always, women. I'm always curious about that. <laughs> how, how do you not? Well, it's not that I don't think about. I mean, certainly I'm aware of my gender, but, but I never, I, think that's I never went in. Me. Right, right. But, but at the same time, it's more about realizing. I mean, there are only occasions when I'll look up and go, "Wow, I'm the only woman in this room," even though I'm often the only woman in the room. It's not that it's not so much a front part of my consciousness, which I think oftentimes is something that women do have to strip away in order to step in, to, to step out of line, to, to be counted in, is that it, sometimes you've got to let go of that, what I think can be a cloak of, well, I'm a woman, how can I do that? See, but that's never how I thought of myself. Right. See, and that's the difference, because if, if that's how you think about being a woman, I wouldn't want to be thinking about it either. Exactly. So, so it's, it's, I, 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 I but it, it really is that, that, that I am bringing all that I am. And that if somebody doesn't like part of that just because of how I was born, that is their problem. Right. I mean, I have chapter and verse of things that people have said to me that you just go, really? I, a fabulous story, fabulous story, which I, I think will illustrate the point. I've been spending time with a lot of women <coughs> veterans. And there was a woman who was Molly about your size who had gone to officer training school, and she was dropped off in Iraq. Her uniform is crisp, you know, there is a <coughs> smudge on it. And she's about to be introduced to the 200 men that she is going to be leading in, you know, the war in Iraq. And the guy who's leaving, you know, is happy to be leaving, <clears throat> gets, um, gets all the men together, and, you know, they introduce her. And she gets some little, you know, welcome speech and how much, you know, she's going to work with them and help them and blah, 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 blah. First question, first question is, ma'am, how far away do I have to be from you to take a piss? First question. She had the presence of mind. And this is what I mean. She had the presence of mind to come back and say, far enough away from me not to get me wet. That's what she said. So that whatever guys thought they were going to have to do, you know, she just eliminated it immediately. And I think that's what we need to learn how to do in those situations as opposed to, you know, trying to be one of the fellas. She made it very clear what her boundaries were around that kind of stuff. And she went on to be a very successful, you know, officer, came out of West Point, works on Wall Street. I mean, she she did okay. But all the things that we can worry about, about our size, about our gender and all that stuff, at some point when confronted with somebody who's 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 testing you and also trying to show off or whatever he was doing, or you know, doesn't believe women should be in charge or whatever he did. Just 
too. So I would say learn some really good one-liners. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It uh, looks like we're out of time. I'm Paula Fraley. I'm with Howard Tolman. I'm the resident pinata. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, now I want to thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you very, very much. much.